Okay, we're going to look at section 6.5 and derive uh, the tools necessary to make the least squares approximation uh, given a set of measurements. So I'll go over the goals. Uh, look at an example 2D problem, define something called the residual, then define the least squares approximation, and do two examples. So by the end of this, you should be able to use the least squares method to get the best fit uh, given some data. Uh, you should be able to take a data fitting problem and convert it into a least square system. And you should be able to take a, um, uh, a result or a system and calculate the residual for your calculation. Okay, uh, before we get started here, just a quick reminder of one important thing is that if I have two vectors, u and v, and I've got some angle between them, the dot product is the length of u times the length of v times the cosine of the angle between them. And if this angle is a right angle, then the cosine will be equal to zero in that case. Okay. So that means the dot, if I have the dot product of two vectors and it's zero, that means these two vectors are at right angles to one another. And as an aside, there's another way or alternate way to write this expression. So let's see, what is u dot v? If u is, let's do this. If I have some u1, u2, u3, un, and I dot it with v1, v2, v3 to vn, this is defined to be u1, v1, plus u2, v2, plus u3, v3, and you keep doing that until you get down to the end. And you get a scalar number. This is an alternate way to write the dot product. That's the exact same thing. Now be careful here. These are for column vectors. So if I've got u dot v, u transpose, if it's a column vector like this, will look like that. So if I take that first column and turn it into the first row, and then I leave the v alone. Now when I go to calculate this expression, I'm going to have u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus u3 times v3. Keep going until I get to u and v and I get exactly the same expression right there. So there's two ways to do this. I can say u dot v if these are column vectors or u transpose v gives me the exact same calculation. Okay, so now uh, this idea of least squares approximation is built on this idea that we have more um, equations than we have variables. And we have an over uh, constrained problem. Um, and in fact, it's maybe a, an inconsistent problem. It usually is not consistent. Okay, so a classic example is this. Suppose I have two variables, y and x, and I've got some linear relationship between these two things. And I want to verify what is the value for m and what is the value for x, or sorry, what is the value for b given some measurements. So what happens is you don't necessarily know what m1 or b is or you have an idea and you want to confirm it. You go out and you run an experiment. So the first experiment you set the value of x and then you measure a value for y. Then you run the experiment again, you get a value for x2, and you observe a value for y2. You run it again, you get a number for, you set the value for x3, you measure a y3, and you keep doing that over and over and over again until you get this. So basically what you have is a, a pair set of pairs of numbers. Each pair of numbers is an x and a y, and you've got n of these. And what you're trying to do is make an approximation for the slope and the y-intercept. And if you graph these things, it may look like this. And you notice that it's not on a straight line because when you run the experiment, there's going to be some kind of error here. So there's going to be some best straight line that best fits this under some constraint. But um, we can't make all of those things fit the line. We can't set uh, all of those equal to each other. So we, we had what? y equals m1x plus b, 
for each of these pairs of x and y, we cannot make this always true. Right? It's always going to be off this line because there's going to be some error. And what we're assuming here for our error, the error that's made is in the y direction. Right? So we're assuming the measurement for x is good, but the measurement for y has some error in it. And so we want to, what we want to do is minimize those errors somehow. All right, so what do we have? We have uh, y equals mx plus b. We've got many values for y and x, and we want to calculate m and b, but we only have two unknowns, and we have many, many equations. And it's important to recognize here that we just made a switch And that's, we've taken uh, original equations, which is usually thought of as being an independent and a dependent variable, and we've turned it around, and that now we're focused on this and this. These parameters are things we don't know, and we're trying to f solve the equation for those rather than the y's and the x's. So there's a little transformation we've done here that, that you have to be careful about. Uh, and because we have so many of these equations and only two unknowns, our system is not going to be consistent. And so from that, if we have a large number of equations and they're not consistent, how do I figure out what's the best way to get M1 and B, whatever best means? And this is, there's many ways to do this. This is only one way. Okay, so what do we have? We have our system of equations. So if everything was exact, y1 would equal m1x1 plus b, y2 would equal m1x2 plus b, and on down. All of these would be true. But there's some error that's made here, so these are not quite exact. Again, our unknowns here are the m's and the b's. So we've done a switcheroo here. And this is not an equation for x and y now. These are equations for the m and the b's. And I can take this expression here and write it as x1 times m1 plus 1 times b is y1. So that equation right there is represented in that row of the matrix and that row of the vector on the right-hand side, and my unknowns are the m and the b's. This equation right here is represented here. We've got x2 times m1 plus b is equal to y2. This equation right here is represented here. So we have x3 times m1 plus b is y3. And we keep doing that all the way down till we get to this equation, which is represented here, which says that xn m1 plus 1 times b is equal to ym. Okay, so now we have our system of equations written as a matrix. Notice we have many rows and only a few columns. and this, if we were to do row reduction here, it's very unlikely that we'd get this to be, to be uh, consistent because we're probably not going to get zeros below here. So what do we do? So let's back up a second. We now have it in this form ax equals b, but it's not really equals. Hopefully it's close. So if I subtract b from both sides, ideally this should be close to zero, but it's not. So we're going to define this to be the residual. So this is our error that we're making for a given value of x. This is the error that we have in our approximation for the m1 and the b. And that residual I'm going to call r. So this is a definition for something called the residual. And what we want to do is we want to make that residual as small as possible in some sense. And we're going to look at one way which we mean small. So here's the problem. I have ax equals b, but it's not really equals, right? So that's not quite true. And it's not true oops, because b is probably not in the column space of a, right? I want this to be close. So I've got my vector b here. I have a times x, 
and I want to find the value for this vector x that will make something along this. So this is going to be my column space of A. So these are all, the span of the columns of A are all possible columns of A. I want to find which of these vectors in that span is going to be closest to B. And if I think of it this way, if this was, I want this R to be perpendicular to every vector in this column space of A, right? That's got to be a right angle here. If it's not, right, if this is a little bit shorter, this vector is going to get, this R vector is going to get a little longer, or if it's a little long here, AX is a little long, my residual is going to get a little longer in that way. So I want AX to be, I'm sorry, I want the residual to be perpendicular to any vector in the column space of A. And if that, if I can do that, I'm going to minimize uh, the distance between this column space and this vector B. And so here's the thing to recognize. So what is my A? Be careful here. A, the first column is some A1, the second column is A2, third column is A3, and the uh, last column is AN. Then if I take my residual, then A1 has to be perpendicular to R, a2 has to be perpendicular to R, A3 is perpendicular to R. Every one of these columns of A is going to be perpendicular. So that means if I take A1 dotted with R, that's got to be 0. A2 dotted with R is 0. A3 dotted with R is 0 on down. And so now I've got a new system of equations. And so now this is the system of equations I want to work with uh, and try to solve. So let's go back here. So let's keep in mind A1 is the first column of A, A2 is the second column of A. And I'm going to rewrite this in terms of A1 transpose times R and see what we get. So the first column dotted with R is 0. The second column dotted with R is 0 third column dotted with R is 0. And I keep doing that all the way down to the nth column of A dotted with R is 0. So these are basically just another way to write the dot products. And keep in mind, first column of A is A1, second column of A is A2, third column of A is A3 to AN. I now have a system of equations. What is this equation here? So suppose I've got some R A1 is a column vector, but if I take the transpose, I'm going to get a row vector times R. So if I go across the row and down this column, I'm going to get 0. I look at this equation. If I go across this row, this is now A2 transpose times R is 0. This row is now a 3 transpose, so we'll go across there and down R, I'm going to get 0. And I keep this up. Now for here, this is going to be the last column of A, but I'm going to go across, because right, I'm taking the transpose, that last column. So I'll go across that uh, column, down, sorry, across that row, down R, I should get 0. And what do I have here? This matrix right here is the first row is the first column here. The second row is the second column here. That is just a transpose. So what do I have? I have, I've got, I want AX to get as close to B as possible. So I define the residual by subtracting the B. And so this is my residual. I want the residual to be perpendicular to the columns of A. So if I take A transpose R, I'm going to get the zero vector. 
And now I'm going to take this definition for R and plug it into here. And keep in mind, I know A. A is the data that's given to me. I know B. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for X. So let's see. So what can I do? I'm going to multiply that matrix through, and what do I get? I get A transpose A X minus A transpose B equals the zero vector. And now I add A transpose B to both sides. Let me clean that up. A transpose A X equals A transpose B. And now I have a system of equations that I want to solve. So this is now A transpose A is a new matrix. A transpose B is a new vector, and now I just all I have to do is solve this system of equations for my x. And now I've got something that's well defined, and I can work with using the previous tools that I've seen for solving linear systems.